In this lesson, we'll take a look at the graphs of the sine function, the cosine function, and also the tangent function. And in this first example, we're given that we're asked to graph y equals 3 sine 2x. And what's actually written on the graph here is the normal y equals sine x function. Uh, there's been no transformations whatsoever, it's just a basic sine curve. And we're going to do all these in uh, radians. Uh, what's on the x-axis right now is uh, all these angles and degrees. So I'm going to take those off and put the equivalent angles in radians. We're going to deal entirely in radians here. So for example, there was 90 degrees here, 90 degrees same as pi over 2. There was 180 degrees here, 180 degrees the same as pi radians in radians. Now, look at the uh, different transformations from, from y equals sine x here. So for example, the 3 here, that's always the amplitude for the sine or cosine function. So the amplitude would be 3. Amplitude of the normal sine function is 1, so instead of being uh, 1 above this axis that goes through the middle of the graph, will be 3 above. And the 2 here in the 2x, that changes the period. To calculate the new period, we take the basic 2 pi, because for sine y equals sine x or y equals cos x, the basic period is 2 pi, as you can see here. That's one cycle or one period. And we divide it by that value. So 2's, twos divide out and we get a period of pi. So shorter period. Instead of being all the way to here, then it's going to be actually one full cycle from here to pi. Now, the sine function, uh, there's actually five points that are often used to graph the sine function. Uh, the two ends, the middle, uh, the maximum that's between uh, the first point and the middle point, and then a minimum point that's between the middle point and the end. So, uh, I'm going to go with the two ends first. That's where it'll start, that's where it'll end because the period is pi. Uh, the right and the middle point will be here at pi over 2 now. And then halfway between these, which would be right over here, this would actually be pi over 4, uh, there would be a maximum point which is of course 3 units above this because the amplitude is 3, so we'll put that point right there, and then half of between the middle point and the end point, 3 units below here, there will be a local minimum point right about there, and then we can draw our sine shape curve through those. And we can duplicate this, so we can go another pi and have another cycle go like this and we can just keep on duplicating the same thing over and over again to get as many of those sinusoidal shape curves as we want. So that's what a graph of four cycles of uh, y equals sine 2x looks like. On to the second example, we're asked to graph a cosine function here, so I have the basic cosine graph here. If the y equals cos x function is not transformed, then it starts at a local maximum point. Right in the middle, uh, it hits a minimum point, and right at the end, it's back up to a maximum again. Halfway between the uh, beginning and the middle is where it crosses the x-axis, or the axis that goes through it if it's been translated up or down, and it comes back up um, at three quarters of the way through, halfway between the middle and the end. Now for this graph, number four, same as the last one, uh, is the amplitude. So the amplitude is four here, the constant before the cos or the sine. To get the new period, we would divide 2 pi by a half. So 2 pi divided by a half is the same as the 2 pi multiplied by the reciprocal of a half, which is 2. And 2 pi times 2 is 4 pi. So it has a, a much longer period than the previous example. It'll start here, and one cycle will actually end at 4 pi. So we're only drawing one cycle on this graph. The uh, minus 2, subtract 2 at the end, is a vertical translation, so the whole graph is translated down 2 units. And I like to start with that one when I'm graphing these. So right here you'll see a dotted line coming across, and so that's the vertical translation down 2 units. And it's kind of like the x-axis, that's where it is now. Okay, Amplitude goes uh, 4 above that, 4 below that, etc. And so the um, the starting point, there's no horizontal translation, so the starting point will go 1, 2, 3, 4 above that, and then way over here at 4 pi, we'll again go 4 above that. Halfway between, halfway between those, which of course be at 2 pi, the minimum point will be 4 below, and then exactly halfway between these two and these two is where it will cross the dotted line. So halfway between uh, 0 and 2 pi, which would of course be at pi, and halfway between 2 pi and uh, 4 pi would be right here at 3 pi. That's where it'll come back up and cross that axis right in the middle. 
and then we can draw our cosine or sinusoidal shape curve. So that's a that's one complete cycle of y equals four cos a half x minus two. In example three, we're going to graph y equals negative three sine four x minus pi over six plus one. Now, notice that the number in front of the sine in this case is a negative three. So three is still the amplitude, but the amplitude is not negative. What the negative means is that the graph has been reflected um, in the x-axis. That's it was upside down compared to the regular sine function. You might not recognize this at first because I've uh, only got a little over half of a period of the sine function graphed. This actually is the normal sine function. It starts at 0, 0, hits a maximum of pi over 2, back down crosses the x-axis of pi, and then there'll be another part over here. So I've only drawn that much because of what the period is for this function. It's very, very short. So the amplitude is 3, and there's been a reflection in the x-axis. That's the negative. Because what that negative means is that all the y values have been multiplied by negative 3. So they're 3 times as big, but they're also the opposite signs. That's why it's a reflection in the x-axis. The period will be 2 pi divided by this 4. And of course, uh, 2 divides into 4 twice, so the period is pi over 2. So a fairly short period uh, compared to the sine function. Now, there's a vertical translation 1 up. That's the plus 1 here. And the x minus pi over 6, that's a, a horizontal translation or a phase shift, some people call it. And, um, oh right, my equation of axis. The, since there's a vertical translation 1 up, which would be right here, the axis that goes through the middle uh, is at y equals 1. So back to the horizontal translation. There would be a horizontal translation of pi over 6 to the right, or a phase shift pi over 6 to the right. Now, the uh, since it's been translated up one unit, there's that axis that goes right through the middle of the graph. And so think of, think of pretend that's the x-axis, and uh, do everything, um, amplitudes 3 above, 3 below, etc. from there. Now this is a sine function. Now there's uh, the, the, uh, the horizontal translation pi over 6 to the right. So even though this has gone up one unit, that we're not starting here, that point has actually been translated pi over 6 to the right. Now to know where this uh, cycle or full cycle ends, the period is pi over 2. Notice that uh, this distance is pi over 2. So it's 4 and 4 and 4. It's actually uh, 8, sorry, 12 blocks altogether. So to know where this cycle ends, we've actually taken the beginning and moved it pi over 6, or in this case, 4 blocks to the right. So we would actually go 4 blocks past this, and then that would be the, where the cycle ends. Now it's a sine graph, so halfway between here and here is where it'll cross the uh, uh, axis again. So we put a dot there. Now this is an upside down sine function, so it does not go up like this and down like this. It does the opposite. It'll actually come down, hit a, a, a minimum point halfway between these and a maximum point in here. And the amplitude is 3, so halfway between three, these uh, 3 below will be the minimum and halfway between these uh, 3 above will be the maximum. If you want to actually count the values, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, there's 6, six blocks between here. So um, actually 3 above that is where that maximum is. And again 6 blocks, so 3 in the middle, so 1, 2, 3 below will be where the minimum point is. And we can draw our sinusoidal shape curve between those. And we can continue it if we want to draw a few more cycles to complete the graph. And there's three full cycles of y equals negative 3 sine 4 x minus pi over 6 plus 1. Now we're going to take a look on this page at the, uh, the tan function. And the tan function is very, very uh, different than it's still a periodic function but it's very different than the uh, two sinusoidal curves y equals sine x and y equals cos x and I have uh, some of each of those graphed here to help us uh, in our graph here in order to graph the tan function it has a whole bunch of vertical asymptotes and that's because uh, the tan of any angle is the sine of the angle divided by the cosine of the angle now this cosine function in the denominator here, any place where that will have a value of 0, that means that tan will be undefined. 
and it'll have a vertical asymptote. And if you remember from the unit circle or any other uh, study you've done in trigonometry, the cosine of any uh, of pi over 2, for example, is 0. The uh, cosine of negative pi over 2 is 0. In fact, any pi multiple above or below those, so for example, a pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, etc., uh, the cosine value is 0. And that's the same in degrees as uh, negative 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 270 degrees, etc. Uh, the cosine is 0, so the tan function will be undefined. And so we draw vertical asymptotes at all of those. So it's all the pi over 2s, basically. So at 3 pi over 2, and then also at 5 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2, 9 pi over 2, etc. So there's a whole bunch of vertical asymptotes. And here's the... Now, in order to graph this, uh, I'm gonna act, we're actually going to graph the, uh, the, the tan function between the negative pi over 2 and the pi over 2. And so I'm going to use a few points to do that. And uh, I'm actually demonstrating where this point came from here. And uh, that would be an angle of 0. And so I'm evaluating the sine of 0 divided by the cos of 0, which of course is 0 because the sine of 0 is 0. So that's why that point is there. Okay, so that's actually the point zero, 0, which is also on the tan function, same as the sine function has a 0, 0 point. Now, let's go halfway between 0 and pi over 2, and then also between 0 and negative pi over 2. And this is a calculation. Uh, we could use an unit circle, but I'm just doing this in a uh, calculator. Uh, the sine of pi over 4 divided by the cosine of pi over 4, and that is 1. The sine of negative pi over 4 over here divided by the cos of negative pi over 4 is negative 1. So that means that pi over 4, 1 and negative pi over 4, negative 1 are points on the curve. So pi over 4, 1 would be right there and negative pi over 4, negative 1 would be right there. Almost looks like a straight line, but it's not. Now, what I want to know now is what happens as we go over here and get close to the angle pi over 2. Now, pi over 2 is, well, to several decimal places, is 1.570796, etc. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to evaluate the tan function at 1.57. So it's just before this, not exactly at the exact value of pi over 2. So the sine of 1.57 divided by the cos of 1.57 actually works out to 1255 and a bit. And so what that's inferring is that as we get close to pi over 2 from the left side, like below pi over 2 a little bit, the y value is huge. So what's happening as you come over here is the graph's y value is getting really large. And what happens as you go in this direction, you get close to negative pi over 2, so negative 1.57 is just a little bit bigger than that, a little bit to the right of it. And divide the sine of negative 1.57 by the cos of negative 1.57, you get negative 1255. So the y value is getting to be a very large negative number. And so I'll stick a, num a point here and a point here, just representing the, as you're close to that asymptote, the y value gets large negative or large positive. And we'll join those together, and that's the shape of the tan function. And so in between each of these pairs of uh, vertical asympt asymptotes, we have the same shape. So what tan is, is it's a whole bunch, an infinite number in fact, of these same shape curves. And that's what the tan function looks like. It's very different than the sine or cosine function. And that's the end of the lesson.